just me and my family, but everyone who's in this sudden new group that is formed in this refugee center, not all of them people that I know from before. And we would in some cases go and talk to people about assistance that we wanted to, be, to provide and have people say, it doesn't sound fair to us, so please don't do it here. We would have a certain amount of money that we could do and we ended up in some cases having to look for places that had the size that fit to that amount of money instead of slicing in other ways that we might usually, such as looking at particularly vulnerable people, like elderly, like children, even those people who by our rationale and by most rationale really are entitled to special consideration, did not want to be seen as taking something special. They were really thinking about the people around them. It's a very important thing and it's something that becomes so much more difficult under times of stress like these that I think the only way it's really achievable under those circumstances is if, if it's constantly practiced at other times. And that really helped me to understand some of the elements of, of J Japanese culture that I did find frustrating before. And it's something that I think it's important for all of us to consider when we think about the possibilities that, that could happen. Um, so I'll just close with a couple of messages from a um, gas station in Minami Sanriku. And particularly to thank everyone and thank particularly the university and the Terasaki Center for putting on this event and helping us all remember what happened one year ago. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Older, for sharing your experience and your insight. Actually, your story really reminded me of the greatness of the Japanese community, but also at the same time that the negative, certain negativeness in our Japanese community. Next presenter is uh, Mr. Toshio Hirano. Mr. Hirano is a senior manager for GEN, Japan Emergency NGO, the first uh, federation of Japanese NGOs who worked on, who worked and pulled together resources of several NGOs to carry out projects that may have been too difficult for a single entity. Mr. Hirano immediately entered the affected area when the Great East Japan earthquake hit, provided aid, and currently continued to support the disaster area of northern eastern Japan. Please welcome Mr. Toshio Hirano. Thank you very much, Professor Abe. Uh, my name is Toshio Hirano. I work for Japan Emergency NGO as a senior manager. And today, I'm also here as Kizuna Ambassador from Ministry of Foreign Affairs Japan. Kizuna means the bonds of friendship. So I'm here to maintain the friendship between United States and Japan. Uh, let me explain about Japan Emergency NGO, or GEN. We work for the self-reliance of the people after the disasters. We consider three capacities essential for self-reliance. One, to be able to identify the issues to be solved. Two, to be able to solve the issues. Three, to involve others in the process. And we start from the emergency assistance and through livelihood recovery, aiming at the community regeneration, through this pro process, we raise this capacity of the community so that people will be self-reliant. We do this not only in Japan, but we are currently working in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iraq, Sri Lanka, South Sudan, Haiti, and Tohoku in Japan, those seven countries we are working. As you can see, those are after the conflict or after the natural disaster countries. Now let us talk about the Great East Japan earthquake. Uh, we are currently working in Miyagi Prefecture, uh, especially Ishinomaki City, which is 130 kilometers from the uh, epicenter. And uh, as you can see, this peninsula, this is called Oshika Peninsula, which is closest to the uh, epicenter that we are, we are working. Uh, let's see our first response. On March 11th, earthquake happened, and uh, 
we are preparing the information, uh, we are collecting the information and preparing for the mission. I was ready to leave on this day. However, due to the uh, situation of the power plant and nuclear power plant, uh, we couldn't leave on this day. And we decided to observe another day. And the uh, first mission went on 13th of March to Sendai in Miyagi Prefecture. I was a member of the first mission. And there, Sendai is the uh, center of this prefecture. So we collected the information and uh, we did some distribution for the evacuees. After one week, we sent the second mission to Ishinomaki City in Miyagi Prefecture. Ishinomaki City is the coastal area of this prefecture. And uh, that's the time we decided to continue our project in Ishinomaki City. And there we did assessment and some emergency distribution. After five days, we successfully opened our office in Ishinomaki City. Uh, the damage of the Ishinomak city, uh, death toll is over 3,000, still missing 500. That's one third of this prefecture. And houses completed the street over 22,000. That is a quarter of this uh, uh, damage in the prefecture. That means this city is marking the worst damage. Uh, this is the photo uh, of the coastal area of this city. As you can see, all these area houses are washed out. And uh, this is about uh, uh, a month after tsunami, so the debris are uh, already collected from the roads so that the uh, vehicles can pass. We could see some boats on the road which was blocking our uh, activities. And this is a very common, you know, uh, scene. Uh, because the water level was reaching to the second floor, the we saw the vehicles on the roof. Uh, the, by the way, the people of this house were evacuating on the second floor, waiting for the rescue team when the water level is like this. The first floor was totally destroyed. Uh, some of the area, uh, due to the earthquake, uh, the land itself was uh, permanently sunk. So even after tsunami is gone, the water, uh, is, uh, the area is still submerged. This is another photo on the peninsula. You can see this peninsula. This peninsula is accommodating 33 small ports like this, but uh, most of them are totally destroyed. Let us see uh, our activities in this one year, starting from the earthquake here, three months, six months, nine months, and we are here now after one year. Let's see from the food and non-food item distribution. This is how we distributed the clothes to the people who are evacuating. And uh, we did a soup kitchen. Since people cannot live on the cold food, uh, pretty soon we set up the kitchen outside under the tent. And uh, those are all volunteers came from western side of Japan through Jen. Uh, and uh, they cooked under the tent and uh, distributed those food. We provided over 25,000 hot dishes. We set up the dining under the tent, so those evacuees uh, sometimes gather and eat and uh, exchanging the information here. In the uh, spring season, after May, sometimes we set up the dining outside under cherry blossom. And uh, as time goes on, we started asking the local people to manage this kitchen by themselves. And uh, soon we started the relaxation activities. As people are living uh, in such situation, this is an evacuation center. Most of the centers are schools, as you can see, basketball here. There's no privacy, there's no space for relax. So we set up the room for relaxation. This, uh, these are volunteers, they are specialists of facial massage. And uh, they, there's some relax for the women. And haircut. This is one of the classroom in the center, and also hand massage, and some relaxation entertainment for the children, and transitional shelters. As already reported, uh, the government has started the construction of the shelters pretty soon. Uh, this is uh, uh, the government built uh, prefabricated houses. Uh, 
the uh, government built over 52,000 in total in Tohoku area. Out of them, 7,000 were constructed in Ishinomaki city in 131 shelter sites. For these transitional shelters, uh, the gov what government did is only the uh, box, the shelter itself. There's empty inside. So uh, we distributed uh, those kitchen utensils and uh, beddings, bedding materials like mattress and sheets, blankets, to all the 700 uh, shelters in Ishinomaki city. Uh, we try to catch up to the construction so that we can bring all those items before they shift to the shelters. We recruited local people who lost jobs uh, to distribute all these. Uh, we paid some money so that they can, it, it can help some, you know, uh, their life. After six months, some of the activities we stopped and some of the activities continued uh, integrated in the community space for community rebuilding and psychosocial activities. All the, uh, these emergency shelter sites have a common room like this so that residents can gather and discuss. We facilitated, facilitated such discussion uh, and meeting in this common room because they are coming from the various area and some of them, they don't know each other and they tend to stay in the room and will not come out. So we try to uh, get together in the common room and discuss about their community. This is part of the community rebuilding. Sometimes we utilize the local community center after we clean all those mud and debris. Uh, this is our facilitator. Uh, this is the part of the workshop to think about their community. Sometimes we did a craft making so that people gather, and while they do the same thing in collaboration, they start talking to each other. This is a part of the psychosocial assistance and community rebuilding. And sometimes people are worried about uh, houses and land and other assistance schemes, which is not clear to them, but uh, give, uh, already announced by the government. So we invited the lawyers, they are volunteer lawyers, they come to our community center, and the people are explaining to the people about the government assistance schemes. Uh, right after the earthquake, we soon started the sludge and debris removal by volunteers. Over 5,000 volunteers came through Jen to clean up all these uh, garbages, trashes, debris in the town. They cleaned the houses, Farmyard, canals, and they all, those volunteers coming from the southern or western side of Japan, they need accommodation. So we prepared this big house, which was uh, not disrupted by this earthquake, and uh, it was in a little bit upland. So they are staying in, uh, in the house, which we prepared, and they are cooking by themselves. They brought those uh, sleeping bags and tools. Uh, we purchased 1,000 one sets of the tools, uh, shovels and uh, wheelbarrows for, uh, for them to use. We purchased them from the far south of Japan because all these things are so needed by the locals, so we couldn't buy locally. So we purchased from Kyushu. And those volunteers, after nine months, uh, the town is becoming cleaner and cleaner, so the types of activities are changing. Now the volunteers are assisting the fishery. You know, the uh, fisherman wants to resume their fish, uh, aqua farming. So this is how the volunteers are helping to plant the seed of seaweeds, wakame seaweeds. And the scallops, this is also aqua farming. Volunteers are cleaning the shells. Uh, of the uh, hotate scallop uh, farming. And in addition to such manual or work to remove sludge and debris, we also assist the local companies to remove the debris. Those local companies, they lost most of the vehicles in tsunami, while many debris are there, and they are professional to collect those debris 
before tsunami, but since they don't have vehicle, they couldn't work. So we rented those vehicles so that they can work and also the company can protect the employment. And such uh, protection of the employment, employment is now leading to our livelihood recovery as assistance. For those uh, shop owners who lost their shops, we built two buildings to accommodate 16 shops. And Fisherman's Cooperative, we, prov we are providing the items or properties which is lost. This is forklift and a water tank and fishing nets. We couldn't find a complete fishing net because uh, it is so needed. So we again purchased those material from the far side of Japan and we are providing the material so that fishermen can make the fishing net by themselves. After one year, as we saw, uh, we have three pillars of activities. One is a community space for community rebuilding and psychosocial. Two is volunteer activity. And three, livelihood recovery. Especially now we are uh, focusing on the fishing. Now, what's the next step? When earthquake happened, their people's life suddenly dropped to the emergency phase. We did the emergency assistance here. Now they are recovering gradually, but even though they reached to the former level of the life, due to the depopulation in the rural area, they may not see their future. Then younger people tend to go out of village, giving up to continue their traditional work there. There is such tendency of the depopulation even before the earthquake in the very remote area, especially uh, where we are working. So uh, what we can do is to set up the future vision so that people can agree on the new future vision and go toward this future vision. We have this experience in Niigata. After the earthquake in Niigata 2004, we worked in the very small community in the mountainous area. They were ab about to abandon their village, Des about to decide to abandon their village. Then we started to intervene, and uh, uh, while we are doing the uh, urgent assistance, we try to facilitate to make a common future vision. We took two years for them to agree on this future vision but they did it. And then we took another four years to raise their capacity for the self-reliance, which I mentioned in the first. Now, with this future vision and capacity, they can set up their objectives, the issues to be solved, and then they can together to solve these issues by involving others. Involving others is very important. That is the reason why we are still continuing the volunteer activities. In Niigata, in the village, some of the young volunteers, now they are living in the village, they became the new residents of the village. And also, most of the volunteers are direct customer to their produce. That village was producing rice, special rice. And now, instead of selling to the uh, uh, cooperative, now the, this village is selling directly to those volunteers, uh, those uh, former volunteers. They are now back to their places, but they are buying directly from the village. So they are the customers. So we are utilizing the similar, uh, this experience to this case. Of course, the, the damage of the uh, scale of the damage is much larger, but still we are now uh, while we are doing this community space, volunteer activity, and livelihood, we are trying to build a trust with the community people so that we can start facilitate facilitate this common future vision. We have already started some workshops for this. And then while we do this, we involve others so that people can participate in the actual activity. Like, like I said, uh, we are asking the local people to manage the soup kitchen. From there, we can, uh, they can raise their, those capacities. Yes, that's what we are doing now. Now, lastly, 
I'd like to ask all of you after this session, after this conference, please take action. Please prepare for future case in your country. Please discuss with a family member if huge earthquake happened, what will you do? The communication network may be cut. You may, uh, you may not find where are your children. So please discuss with your family member what will you do. And when you do so, please uh, participate in the recovery process of Japan and learn from our case. Please remember our case and learn something from our case. This is the final. Uh, I'd like to show you the smiles of the people. They lost properties, houses, family members, but they are not crying. They are making effort and they are cheering by themselves, try to rebuild their community. So thank you very much for your heartwarming assistance and please be with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hirano, for your presentation. Actually, uh, it's a kind of relieving to know that the, those victims are not left alone, but there are so many people working together through organizations like yours. But also, I really agree that the, um, it is very important not only to address the pressing issue, but to work to create a future vision to be very hopeful. So I really appreciate for your presentation again. Thank you. Uh, next presenter is Ms. Junko Mabuchi. Ms. Mabuchi is a East Japan program officer for uh, Adventist Development and Relief Agency, or ADRA, ADRAC, an NGO that specializes in domestic and international emergency support and relief. Since November 2011, Ms. Mabuchi has been in charge of Great East Japan Earthquake Support Services at IDRA, Japan, and is currently engaged in aid and activities in Fukushima Prefecture. Please welcome Ms. Junko Mabuchi. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Junko Mabuchi. I'm a program, East Japan program officer from NGO called Adra Japan. And I'm also graduated from UCLA in 2002. So I'm very happy to be back here to be able to speak <laughs> about Japan. Thank you. So um, Adra Japan is working in both uh, Miyagi and Fukushima prefecture, but um, I'm, a I'm in charge of reconstruction program in Fukushima. So I would like to speak about uh, Fukushima today. Um, but the situation and what people are going through in Fukushima is very complicated and it's, it's not, I cannot talk everything about uh, what's happening in Fukushima in 20 minutes, but I would like to share with you a snapshot of what's happening in Fukushima at the moment. Um, when people speak about Fukushima, then they tend to speak only about a nuclear disaster. But Fukushima is not different from other affecting pre affected prefecture in terms of getting um, damaged by earthquake and tsunami. This is a map of Japan, and the pink area is a Fukushima prefecture. And this uh, red line shows the coastline where I was hit by tsunami. In Fukushima, tsunami reached more than 20 meters high and uh, went into um, went into as far as four kilometers inland. And as a result of tsunami and earthquake and tsunami, only in Fukushima, 1,957 people have died and 50, uh, 54 people are still missing as of last week and 85,229 houses were either totally or partially destroyed. This is a picture of the city of Soma you can see the damage caused by earthquake and the building you can see in the distance is a Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. This is the picture of Iwaki, also in Fukushima. So by, by seeing these pictures, you can see that the damage caused by earthquake and tsunami was as catastrophic as in other places. 
But the disaster in Fukushima didn't end here. Of course, as you know, like four hours, a um, few hours after tsunami, people in Fukushima would have to face another disaster, which is, of course, a nuclear power plant failure. So this is a close up of, uh, of the region. Sorry, it's a bit difficult to see with all different colors. But the, the area surrounded by green line is a Fukushima prefecture. And the, tri the red triangle is the shows where the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is. And the circles around it show 20 kilometers radius evacuation zone and the 30 kilometers radius voluntary evacuation zone. I will explain later what the voluntary evacuation is. Um, and as the result of nuclear disaster, more than 160,000 people have evacuated and are still, still have not returned to their, their home, hometown. And this number is just what is reported to the government. So the actual number is expected to be much higher than this. This is the picture of evacuation center. Um, it, this is also in the school gymnastics. And people li lived like this for.